Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie Mary and today we are going to talk about five different things that you can do to sort of overcome your craving for overconsumption. That's going to be a really weird and complicated title, so we're going to work on that. But nonetheless, we're going to be talking about some things you can do if you know that you should try to reduce your consumption of goods, if you know that you want to try to reduce the amount of shopping that you're doing, but it's just really, really hard to get started. And trust me, I so get it. I once owned over 100 pairs of shoes. I know that it can be difficult to adapt new habits, and that old habits just die really really hard. So without further ado, let's get into five things that you can do if you want to make sure that your old habits die just a little faster. First of all, stop using shopping as a leisure activity. Stop using shopping as an activity that you do in your pastime because that can really make you accumulate a lot of stuff that you wouldn't normally need because you wouldn't normally be looking for them. I know this can be really difficult. I had this habit when I was in high school of every day after school, I would go out and I would look through the different stores and I would buy whatever was on sale and within my budget. And there's a lot of things that I would never have ended up getting if it wasn't for this specific pattern of behavior. There is the option of exchanging actual stores and fast fashion stores and department stores with thrift shops and vintage shops instead. And of course, this is not necessarily completely perfect. Overconsumption is still overconsumption. And I feel like we as a society should move towards not having more than we need. But I definitely also feel like we should cut each other some slack. So if you like the hunting of it all, finding a good bargain, going to vintage shops or thrift shops are so much better for the environment. It's also much better for your budget. And honestly, I think it's way more satisfying to find a really good thing in a thrift shop or in a vintage shop than finding something in a fast fashion store. If you and your friends usually get together to shop, propose a different activity. It can be either going to a secondhand shop or a vintage shop, but it can also be something that doesn't include spending money whatsoever. It can be going on a picnic or going on a hike or participating in a sports activity together, taking a cooking class or doing pottery painting. Just propose other activities that doesn't involve buying more things than you actually need. And there's also the upside to going out, taking a class or doing something together is that you will get something as well, but you'll get like skills and skills are just better than things. <laughs> if you have to go to an actual store. It can be tempting to buy something because you're sort of exposed to all the new styles, things you haven't got, things you haven't seen before, designs that you have never seen before. It can be super, super tempting, also because the store is literally designed to make you feel that way. So I haven't been in an actual store in I don't know how long. I remember a couple of years ago, I was in a department store with my mom because she had to get a new dress and uh, I was like thrifting all the way and she was like, no. <laughs> to be fair, my mom sh shops secondhand so, so, so much and we have always done this. I grew up with like a secondhand family where we all went to thrift shops. So like, I'm also gonna cut her some slack here. But I remember we went to an actual store to get her new dress. And I went looking through the things because that's sort of just what you do when you get into a store. I didn't sit in the corner with my arms crossed like, no. But I went through sort of the things because you just do that. It's sort of like learned behavior. And instead of being tempted and going and buying the things, I just looked for, okay, this is cool, I hadn't thought of it, oh, this is a cool way to style this. And then I took that and I saved it in my brain and I went home and I looked for things online on secondhand shops and I went through the local thrift shops and I saw if I could find similar styles so I could achieve the same look but without actually buying the product. And I think this is a really good idea if you sort of like the new modern trendy things, you don't actually have to go out and buy the new modern trendy things, but you can interpret those styles with things that you already have or things that you find secondhand. Okay, number three is kind of important, but stay caught up on what happens behind the scenes in the world of fashion. This means following accounts that sort of expose all the shit <laughs> that's going on in the world of fashion, because it's really easy to sort of get caught in the romanticized, glamorized part of the fashion industry. And as a consumer, it can be really, really easy to sort of forget once in a while what those products actually represent. And to me, it just feels 
feels like a really really good thing to support and follow people online that makes me remember this i know there's also a point to be made that if you keep watching sweatshop footage just like if you keep watching slaughterhouse footage you can at some point become totally emotionally numb to what's going on so i don't necessarily suggest that but i do suggest keeping up with the knowledge and always learning new things about what's going on what brands are doing and there are so many accounts that keep brands responsible uh, for what they're doing and call them out and i think that's so important we have the clean clothes campaign we have the war on want we also have fashion revolution you can also re-watch or watch for the first time documentaries like river blue or the true cost i know i recommend them quite a lot but they're just really worth a watch and it's just such a good way to get a lot of information about a topic and especially something as complicated as the fashion industry and lastly you can also follow influencers or people on social media that talk about sustainable fashion and that talk about the downsides to the normal fashion industry um, and in the sort of same action you can also unfollow people who just romanticize the fashion industry or only post clothing hauls with fast fashion any kind of stuff like that so sort of curating the content that you see on your social media can be a really powerful move in terms of shifting your values and making your choices easier to actually practice you catch my drift. I definitely remember from myself when I started unfollowing certain influencers or certain social media people, my urge to shop gradually just became smaller and smaller because I wasn't constantly exposed to buying new things and the joy of buying new things. If there's something you really really want make a rule and wait. My rule of thumb is that I have to wait at least 14 days before buying something. This usually do not account for things that I find thrifted but for larger investment pieces and generally for things that you have to purchase and you know, um, I usually like to wait at least 14 days because there is so often that you really want to buy something and the feeling feels genuine, but it just really isn't. But it's sort of a product and, and a symptom of a mood, of a vibe, of just the situation that you're in and the mo emotions that you're feeling at this very point and sometimes they go away and it might be really great to buy the product and then be like yeah but then you sort of stop feeling that way um, whereas if you really 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 want something and you buy it you can be happy with this thing because it's been useful to you over and over again for the rest of your life and um, sort of the buy me once mentality I think is important but have a rule of thumb that you have to wait a certain amount of days before you actually make the investment before you actually buy something because a lot of the times this this can really cut down on impulse purchases which is where that we waste the most this one is perhaps going to seem a little weird to some but just stay with me and i hope it's going to make sense but challenge the treat yourself culture that we are constantly exposed to don't get me wrong if you want to treat yourself to some good food to some quality time with people to some wellness to some amazing culture feel free to just absolutely there's no problem with that but my problem sort of arises when the treat yourself mantra is adapted by multi-billion dollar corporations and their advertisements i have seen so many products being advertised to consumers under the banner of treat yourself and then a selection of their products and a very common response to this might be you know what I will treat myself and then the first thing that you see because this is just it's connected to the words of their products it's such a sneaky sneaky move because there are already positive associations uh, connected to the treat yourself mantra because what we usually think of is doing things that are good for ourselves and just you know treating ourselves and it's just being misused to make consumers buy things that they don't need at all whilst i was making the script for this video i had uh, i just sat there searching through facebook for a little while and an actual ad came up that said treat yourself and then a selection of bags it just happens all the time and now you're also going to see it everywhere because I told you and uh, yeah it's just an absolute curse. Actually one of the problems I have with the treat yourself mantra is not that we do nice things for ourselves because obviously we need to. We are people and persons that need to do nice things and we need to feel good and we need to take care of ourselves but the treat yourself mantra also in used in advertising centers the consumer in the world and that is a huge problem for sustainability because it 
it's really difficult to be engaged in helping the planet. It's really difficult to be engaged in a community if we are taught and learned that we should center ourselves in the middle and that we should focus on ourselves. I know we should that sometimes, but honestly for me, it helps me so much in my personal journey that I sometimes remind myself that my needs and my cravings are absolutely irrelevant. They're not always meant to be met. They're not always meant to be heard and respected. Sometimes they're just dumb. It seems like something that would demotivate you and discourage you, but honestly, it has the complete opposite effect. I think we need to relearn that we as consumers are not only ourselves, we're not only individuals, we're also part of a community. And that's just so helpful in terms of sustainability, because it makes it easier to cut away some of the things that we don't need. It's sort of the same thing with the zero waste part of sustainability. Um, I've heard so many times people ask me whether or not I think some of this might be inconvenient. Is it inconvenient to bring a napkin in cloth? Is it inconvenient to bring my own plate? I'm always like, no, it's not inconvenient for me because I'm not that important. I can spend an extra couple of minutes of my day making sure that I do this because it gives me so much joy and it also just makes me feel a part of a community and to me that is so incredibly valuable. And that's also what treating yourself can mean. But at this point I feel like the expression has been hijacked by advertisements and that is just not working for me, for sustainability, for us. It's just... It, no, because that honestly really doesn't center the consumer in the middle of the world. It centers the brand and they know that for sure. So a really good idea is sort of distancing yourself from that sort of mentality or reclaiming it and using it in a different way. Either one of those I think is absolutely fine. And thinking about ourselves not only as individuals, but also as parts of a community, because that thing... I. I just think that's super duper important. It's so important that I ended up saying super duper. So those were my five tips to stop over consuming, to stop the craving for shopping. I hope you guys like this. If you have any other things to add, leave them down below because I would love to know what you have to say. And again, as always, if you have anything you would like me to talk about on this channel, leave me a request. I would love to hear what you have to say once again. Okay, thank you so much for watching. If you want to, you can subscribe to this channel. That would make my day. And you can, of course, also like up to this video if you liked it. I hope to see you guys in my next video. Take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye! Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste content and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!